Jesus mighty name we have worshipped father we want to thank you this morning we have returned to give you all the praise and all the glory everything we have seen everything we have seen everything we will see is all by you and Lord we have come as a congregation to say thank you on this special end of the month Thanksgiving service we thank you for how you have helped us we thank you for your diverse encounters and visitations Jesus will return all the praise to you the hour has come father send your word to us like never before hide me behind the cross of Calvary that no man will see me nor hear me but everyone will see you everyone will hear you this morning for all the miracles you have done especially in this month of May all the amazing Thanksgiving we have come to say thank you take it all oh God and at the end of this service I vow to return all the glory honor majesty adoration to your name in Jesus mighty name we have given thanks amen give the Lord a big big end of praise amen and please be seated in God's presence it is my year of breaking limits congratulations amen and amen I welcome you to this last Sunday service last day of the month of May and the end of the month Thanksgiving service I decree in the name of Jesus, even though this month remains just few hours to be over. But in the name of Jesus, this month of May will not be over until your miracle is fully delivered. Let me hear your believing amen. That is to say, between now and 12 midnight, someone's testimony will be released. Someone's status will be changed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, as we behold him, as in the mirror, we are changed. As we behold him in his word this morning, we shall be changed. You shall be changed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For the amazing ministration of the anointed ministry this morning, give the Lord a big, big end of praise. Amen. It's always new every day. Amen. Again, I want to welcome every one of us to this very awesome service. For wherever you are connected, especially our network of uh, churches within New York District, you are welcome. And to every, all, every of our friends connected all across the globe, you are welcome. Please do me a favor this morning. As I'm bringing this word, take your phone, go to our YouTube page, and just share the link. That's one way you can minister to somebody. One of the testimonies we read this morning, uh, during our prayer, somebody was scheduled to pray, and she was in the bus. And uh, because she was in the bus, uh, that didn't stop her from praying. She was praying right in the bus, the driver stopped to observe what was going on. When the driver discovered oh, it was prayer, he continued to pray. Usually in America, you don't do that. <laughs> you don't raise your voice in the bus and be praying. But look at how God is giving opportunity for the gospel. She prayed, she led her prayer. I mean, it's not a silent prayer because you, it was a conference prayer. So it's not something you are praying. You must pray so that everybody will hear. So she was praying aloud in the bus and people were observing those who were saying amen, I believe they were saying amen in their hearts. And as she rounded up the prayer, another woman behind her sounded a loud amen. Nobody disturbed that. Nobody said, keep quiet. Praise God. That's how God has given access to the gospel because of this pandemic. The devil thought he could stop the church. But the church is just blossoming and just expanding. Praise God. So what you can do right now is share the link. Before I came to the altar, I already shared the link. Praise the Lord. Not even to church member too. Some of the social groups I also belong to that is outside the church. Whether they like it or not, they must hear the gospel. Amen. It might not be all of them that will open, but one or two might likely open. And you, don't, you never can tell when God is going to minister to somebody. So just share the link right now. Share the YouTube our video link. It's very, very easy to do. Praise God. Well, good news. Just like we had, we are entering into the midst of the year tomorrow. The midst of the year is a prophetic agenda released to God's servant, the apostle over this commission. June, July is the midst of the year. Five months before June, five months after June. So the June and July, if you want to find the median, if you are a mathematician, you know that's the median. Praise the Lord. The midst of the year, June and July. And God always wrought wonders. So it's not a church doctrine, it's a divine agenda. Just like anything declared prophetically in this commission always culminates in diverse testimonies. We saw the 40 days post-resurrected uh, resurrection visitation. We had a testimony in this service. Now, this is the midst of the year. 
and God is going to be doing amazing wonders. In preparation for this, we're going to have a week-long prayer and fasting. I'm sure somebody is excited. And this week-long prayer and fasting, we also come with prayer in the evening. Praise God. So tomorrow, by the grace of God, we're going to begin the first one. And it's going to be 7 p.m. same time. Praise God. We are going to be broadcasting live. 7 p.m. tomorrow night. And that will be 7 p.m. Monday to Friday. But the prayer and fasting continues till Sunday. Prayer and fasting is an avenue to change our level. God does not need prayer and fasting. Your long-awaited miracle will be delivered this coming week. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So let's get set for that. It's an instruction from leadership. And I know as we dive into God's divine agenda for the season, our life shall be transformed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God did marvelous miracle in the month of May. Amazing miracles that we could not even count. Now, if you live in New York, you will know that this is the center of this pandemic. This is the center. And God wrought amazing wonders. We, he kept us. He protected us. He healed so many. So many of our members are frontline workers. As we read in the testimony this morning. But God has been shielding them. God has been protecting them. This, we need no proof that God is in our midst. The Bible says God is in the midst of them. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. God has been in the midst of us. Amazing testimony. There are so many testimonies that we cannot even, we cannot even read because of the service. Praise God. And all the testimonies we read this morning, they are new testimonies here in New York. This is what the Lord is doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. That is why I know as you are listening to me this morning, your own testimony shall be the next one. In case you are wondering if God has done anything in the month of May for you, you just need to think very deep. And if perhaps you have not experienced it, I decree before 12 midnight, your own shall be delivered. Someone shall still be healed. Someone shall still be set free. Your miracle job shall be confirmed. Your business exp uh, 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 expansion shall, shall, shall be delivered. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's go quickly to what God asked for us this morning. We are considering commanding the supernatural. And this is a subject we started second week of this month. And the focus this morning is commanding the supernatural by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. I love this one. And that was why the choir ministered very wonderfully. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ. There is power in the name of Jesus. And the power in the name of Jesus is what we engage to command the supernatural. But before we go into that, let's see who we are. Because the name of Jesus is not, cannot, may not answer for everyone who does not understand the right to use the name. Now, let's see the right we have to use the name. So, what we are looking at this morning is commanding the supernatural by the power in the name of Jesus. Commanding the supernatural by the power in the name of Jesus. Now, before then, let's see who am I? Number one, I am redeemed an ambassador of Christ on the earth. That's one of the reasons that you can use the name of Jesus Christ because you are representing Jesus Christ on the earth. Now, even though you are in America or from wherever nation that you are, yes, you are naturally in that nation, but your original citizenship is of heaven. You are on the earth as an ambassador of the kingdom of God. In 2 Corinthians 5, 20, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, it says, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. That's the scripture, that's the word of the Lord. Who is an ambassador? An ambassador is a chief of mission, a diplomat. That is an official envoy. Especially a highest ranking diplomat who represents a state or a nation 
and is usually accredited to another sovereign state or to an international organization as the resident representative of their own government or sovereign, sovereign or appointed for a special and often temporary diplomatic. Praise the Lord. That's the definition of an ambassador. An ambassador is someone who is representing his state, representing the sovereignty of his nation, representing the nation that he came from. And is entitled to everything that the nation has. He can declare anything on behalf of the nation. He can speak on behalf of the president. When he speaks in a place where he is sent to as a diplomat, he speaks on behalf of his country. Whatever he declares is honored as if the president of that nation declares it. And that's who you are. And that's why you can use the name of Jesus Christ because you have the mandate. An ambassador carries the mandate of his nation. Ambassador represent their home country while working and living in the country to which they have been appointed. That is why I know in the name of Jesus Christ, anything you declare on the earth because you are ambassador of heaven, heaven will honor it. Let me hear your believing amen. amen. Number two, who am I? I am redeemed to command supernatural breakthrough. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 6 to 9, he said, And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of sin. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Praise the Lord. So we have been redeemed into supernatural breakthrough. Supernatural breakthrough. Because we have the invitation in the, to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Shout hallelujah. Therefore, there is no obstacle. Therefore, there is no barrier. That is why I know the last breakdown you experience shall be the last one ever. Let me hear your believing amen. Someone might be wondering, but this is what we say all the time. I, I think this church, they are very sugar-coated mouths. No, it's not about being sugar-coated mouth. It's the word of God. Now, someone might be asking about, okay, if it is the word of God, why am, not, why am I not experiencing it? Because your turn is now to experience it. Because as you believe now, you will experience your own. Look at one of the testimonies we had. An individual left the family. And this woman connected to the prophetic declaration of 40 days post-resurrection visitation. And in the midst of the 40 days, this man who left long time ago, she didn't disclose the years, but according to the woman, some of the children already graduated from college. So you can tell how long this man had left. But in the midst of the year, this man returned. Tell me if that is not breakthrough for the family. And now he vowed to begin to take his responsibility. Lift up your right hand. I decree in the name of Jesus, everything the enemy has stolen in your life be fully restored. Everything that has experienced stagnation in your life begin to experience forward movement in the name of Jesus Christ. I am redeemed to command supernatural breakthrough. But someone is saying, but I've been believing God all this while, and I've never seen supernatural breakthrough, because it was your night season. But the good news is this, this morning you have just entered into your morning season. I say a new dawn just opened for you. Look at what David said, he said, weeping me endure for a night. A night season is not about 24 hours. A night season is not, oh, I slept and I woke up, oh, my night season. No, a night season can be a day, a night season can be a month, a nice season can be a year. A nice season can be a decade. But I have good news for you. Your nice season is over today. He said, weeping in his favor is life. 
Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I have good news for you. Your joy has finally come. Because your night season is over. Because you are redeemed to command supernatural breakthrough. Now, number three, who am I? I am redeemed a star after the order of Christ. You are redeemed a star after the order of Christ. Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root of, of I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Morning star. Now, he, look at that very critically. Morning star. He didn't just say star. Morning star is the star that shines early. Therefore, I decree in the name of Jesus, every delay in your rising and in your shining has finally come to an end. And someone is saying, well, I'm already 60, I'm already 65, I'm already 45, I'm already 50. Can I still shine early? Yes. Because Abraham began to shine even beyond about that level. And that is still early. It doesn't matter when you start. I decree in the name of Jesus, today your darkness is being turned to light. I decree in the name of Jesus, everything hindering your shining and rising is over today. Because you are redeemed a star after the order of Christ. That was how Christ was sent and that is how you are sent. Therefore in the name of Jesus from today whatever covering your glory is over in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree in the name of Jesus whatever covering your glory comes to an end tonight in the name of Jesus. I decree even in the midst of this pandemic your glory will shine. God will grant you divine idea that will turn you to the envy of your world. Now, there are so many people that are making it in this pandemic. Why some people are crying that, oh, this pandemic is very tough. Some are just appreciating God that this is my season of opportunity. Nobody is praying that the pandemic should continue. But what I'm saying this morning is, it doesn't matter what the situation is. It doesn't matter what the challenge might be. There is always a way out. Therefore, I decree in the name of Jesus, whatsoever that has been limiting your destiny comes to an end this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. So you are redeemed as a star in the order of Christ. Say with me, I'm redeemed as a star. After the order of Christ. Now, commanding the supernatural by the power in the name of Jesus. Now, having the understanding of who we are redeemed to be. Now, let's consider the power in the name of Jesus. What is in the name of Jesus that commands the supernatural? Now, many of us are so familiar with the name of Jesus Christ that we don't know that name carry power. Now, the name of Jesus, number one, is pregnant with wonders. It's, that is, it is filled with wonders. Which means every time we call that name with revelation, every time we call that name with understanding, every time we call that name with, with insight, and with faith, the name answers with wonders. That is why I know in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever that has been making you a wanderer comes to an end this morning. Now, in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. The first one there is Wonderful. That is, the name is full of wonders. And all throughout this month, we have been speaking about signs and wonders. Therefore, if anyone desires wonders, and I know you do, all you need to do is to engage the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at the example of the man at the beautiful gate. In Acts chapter 3, verse 6 to 8, Peter says, Silver and gold I have none, but such as I have, I give thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankles bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple. Walking and leaping and praising God. The name commanded wonder. Therefore I decree the name of Jesus by the wonder in the name of Jesus that affliction over your life is over. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Peter confirmed that 
it was faith through the name of Jesus that made it happen. If you go to verse 16, and his name, through faith in his name, had made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. I decree in the name of Jesus this morning, somebody is receiving his own wonder in the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ is pregnant with wonders. So if someone tells you that something is impossible, if someone tells you that this will take miracle, that is the right time for you to engage the name of Jesus Christ. If the doctor tells you that this one has no solution medically, you will only need God. Then you engage the name of Jesus Christ because there is wonder in the name of Jesus. Now, number two, what is the power in the name of Jesus? The name of Jesus is self-anointed. The name of Jesus. Now, we are self-anointed. Now, we are very used to the power in the anointing oil in this ministry. We know the power in the anointing. But, for instance, if you are traveling on the air and something happened and you don't have your bottle of the anointing oil with you, don't worry. Because you can still be anointed without the oil. Why? If you believe in the self-anointing in the name of Jesus Christ, that name, when you call it the anointing, answers in whatever situation you might be. Praise the Lord. I think someone understand what I'm trying to say. There is anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, that does not substitute using the anointing so that somebody will not misunderstand me and say, okay, I don't need to carry the anointing again. It just complements it. Praise God. It just complements it. Because there is anointing that flows in that name. It's just like if you are used to peanuts, peanuts. In peanuts, you can get peanut oil in the peanuts. But naturally, when you hold peanuts, you may not see the oil. But until it is processed, when it is grinded and squeezed, you can get the oil. Praise God. So the same way, when you call the name of Jesus Christ, there is the oil that comes in that name. That's why in Songs of Solomon chapter 1 verse 3, it says, because of the savour of thy good, good ointment, thy name is as ointment pour forth, therefore do the virgins love thee. The name of Jesus is self-anointed. The name of Jesus Christ is self-anointed. Therefore, I decree the name of Jesus Christ, the anointing in the name of Jesus Christ is answering for someone this morning. Remember the Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good, healing all those that were oppressed of the devil, for the Lord was with him. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree by the anointing in the name of Jesus, every oppression comes to an end in your life. So when you are passing through anything and you need the anointing, you know, anointing does so many things. It's not an anointing service, so I won't really take much time. I know we know so many of all these things. If you have any yoke, upon your head. What do you use to break it? The anointing. He said, on that day, the yoke will be taken away from off thy shoulder, the body from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So when you engage the power in the name of Jesus Christ, the anointing there breaks the yoke. Do you know writing an examination and failing it all the time is a yoke? So you can go into that examination hall and decree in the name of Jesus Christ, every yoke of failure is destroyed. Now, sending application for employment and they interview you first, second, and the third one, they, you know, they tell you, sorry, we, we got a better candidate. It's a yoke. But you can engage the power in the name of Jesus to break that yoke. Now, looking for business exploit and submitting your proposals and everything looks fine and at the end, before they seal the deal and they just tell you, no, we got a better deal. It's a yoke. But the power in the name of Jesus can destroy the yoke. Therefore, I declare in the name of Jesus, whatever yoke the enemy has placed upon your destiny, upon the destiny of your children, the anointing in the name of Jesus Christ breaks the yoke this morning. So you go with this understanding. Anything that is like a barrier on your path, anything that is, you know, like a challenge in your marriage, in your career, in your business, in your health, you engage the anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17, it said, These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. 
Now, that leads us to the point number three. All satanic powers bow to the name of Jesus Christ. All satanic powers bow to the name of Jesus Christ. That is, they bow to the authority and the power in the name of Jesus. Nothing can challenge the authority in the name of Jesus. And the good news is this. As redeemed, the authority in the name of Jesus Christ has been granted to us. In other words, we have the power of atony to use the name of Jesus. Then people around here understand what I'm talking about. When you have the power of atony, you can represent the individual that gives you. You can represent the institution that gives you the power. You can represent the organization that gives you the power. So you and I have the power of atony. So use the name of Jesus. And this name is powerful. This name is full of authority. This name is full of power. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 to 11. He said, wherefore God has highly exalted him. And given, me, given him a name which is above every name. That the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven. And things in earth. And things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, there are different levels of authority. For instance, if you are in the IT department, there is what they call policies or, you know, level, level of security or authority or access. So if you are the IT administrator, you give different people access. Now, the IT administrator, we have what we call the, uh, the root. If it's a password of a system, he has a root password, which means that password can do anything. It can give another person access to so many things. So, in this church now, if we have database, the administrator we have, the root password. So, it can give access to the technical department, they can access certain things in the technical, they can, uh, so financial department can access certain things, but he has everything, he can access everything. Now, the name of Jesus Christ has authority to do everything. There are different names. There, you know, there are names, that's why you have the president, you have the governor, you have a uh, medical professional, you have the politicians. The names can answer. For instance, now if you go to Nigeria and the president of Nigeria gives you access to go and see the governor, right from the gate, the government house will be open to you. But if you carry that same presidential order and you go to a private institution and say, oh, the president said I should come, they tell you, well, this is a private, we, 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 we really appreciate that and we expect the president, but this is a private institution. We don't have anything to do with the president. I'm sorry. So which means that name is limited at that level. Praise the Lord. Now, the name of Jesus answers all around. Now, let's come down to what you may understand very well. Now, if the choir leader, if he signs a document and sends it to you and say, as the choir director, I want you to come to church. And you are not a member of the choir. And he sent it to you. I want you to come to church on Wednesday. You'll be wondering, ah, what do I have to do with uh, the choir director? I mean, I don't belong to the choir. You'll be wondering. Now, that's a level. But if he sends the same level to a member of the choir, that, oh, I want you to come, and he signs, the member will show up, right? Now, if I send a letter to anyone in the church, and I said, I want you to be here. You also honor that letter. But if that letter carries something that you think is not right, you will still challenge your authority. For instance, if I send a letter to you now and I say, okay, uh, I want you to do something that it will take more than only you to do it. For instance, if I send something to a member of the board and I say, I want you to go and do something and you know you cannot do it alone. You will still ask me, sir, but you know, I can't do this thing alone. I need to consult with A, B, and C. Which means, even in spite of being a resident pastor, that name still has his own level of authority. I cannot just speak and say, go and do like that. 
But if I send a memo from Papa to you that Papa said we should do this thing now, you don't need to consult anybody. Praise the Lord. That's the level. Now, the name of Jesus Christ has the highest level of authority. Shout hallelujah. Now, the demons, the principalities, the angels, the humans, the government, everybody honors the name of Jesus. That is why I know in the name of Jesus Christ, as you engage the name, every closed door will be open. Every principality and power will bow to the name. Everything that is hanging will be released unto you. Your healing, health, and wholeness shall be released in that name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That name carries the highest form of authority. That's why in Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10, it says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man enters into it and they are saved. There's nothing you can do with that name. But let me tell you, the name does not answer to shouting. It does not answer to how many times you call it. It only answers to faith in the name. So, and it doesn't matter all throughout this week, we have been taught at the covenant of prayer, you don't have to be a pastor, you don't have to be an evangelist to really serve God. The same thing is applicable. You don't have to be a pastor to use the name. You only need your faith to believe in the name. Jesus will always ask the people. Someone will cry, oh, that son of David, have mercy on me. Heal my, heal my eyes, heal me of lame. And one question that is common to all, do you believe that high the son of David? In other words, high Jesus can do this. And once faith is asserted, miracles are delivered. Therefore, I decree the name of Jesus Christ, your long-awaited miracle will be delivered in this service. Please rise with me to, to your feet this morning. Lift up your voice and appreciate Jesus. Celebrate him. It's so short, but I believe God is really sent light to you this morning. Raise your voice, appreciate him. Thank him for the access to the name of Jesus. Thank him for the access to the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Repo kataya galagadosh. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Now hear this. If you are not born again, you don't have the authority to use the name. The name does not answer to everyone. It only answers to those who have the legal right to use the name. You cannot take my ID card right now and take it to uh, the post office to claim a letter. Say, oh, this is Pastor Ajayi. No. That would be tantamount to fraud. So if you are not authorized to use the name, you cannot use the name. The name does not answer. And Satan knows who can use the name. Remember the seven son of Skiffa? They say, in the name of Jesus, the apostle says, eh, we know Paulo. <laughs> but you have to show us the right to use the name. And they dealt with them. So the access to the name is salvation. And it doesn't matter how long. If you get saved today, you can use the name today. Just like when you become the citizen of America. Somebody may say, oh, I've been a citizen for 40 years. You just became a citizen yesterday, you are the same. They don't use how long you have been a citizen to do anything. It's just a document. You became United States citizen today. You can get the right of the citizen today. Because you have, once you have, the, the, the access. Praise the Lord. So if you become born again today, you will receive your miracle now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now. Put your right hand on your chest and say with me, you want to give your life to Jesus, so I have to have access to the name, or you want to rededicate your life to him. Say, Lord Jesus, I know I have sinned and come short of your glory. Forgive me all of my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. I surrender my life to you. I rededicate my life to you. From today, I will serve you. I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Father, I want to thank you for everyone who said the prayer this morning. That surrendered their life to you. And rededicated their life to you. You said in your word, whoever comes to you will not cast out. Please wash their sins with your precious blood. Write their names in the book of life. And from today, they will serve you till you return. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Congratulations. Now you can now engage the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Take the next step. Go to our website and submit your information. 
and we'll continue to pray with you and also connect with you. Now, I want us to put to work what we have practiced. Now, just look at one thing that must answer in the name of Jesus. It might be concerning your marriage. Maybe you want to, be, you want to get married. Just like this Saturday, there's going to be a marriage in this church. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our brother, uh, brother uh, Innocent from the choir is very, very popular. He's been with us all throughout this lockdown. And Sister Linda from the decorating department, they, they will be getting married this coming sa Saturday. Aren't you excited? Praise the Lord. And so, we are going to transmit it live for you to be able to also celebrate with them. Praise God. Now, maybe you also want God to connect you miraculously. You also want, you can call it forth in the name of Jesus. Now, maybe you want business idea. You need your business expansion or you need healing. Anything you need, just in the next two minutes, engage the faith and power and the authority in the name of Jesus. Now, go ahead and begin to pray. Every chain is being broken right now. Every body is being released right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift up your voice and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay hold because I'm a child of God. Because I am redeemed in the order of Christ as a star. Because I'm a citizen of heaven. Because I have the power of atony to use the name. Because I'm an ambassador of Christ. I engage the name of Jesus this morning. Begin to engage in with faith for the transformation of my marriage, for the transformation of my children, transformation of my business, for my healing, health, and wholeness, for my marital breakthrough, for my restoration, 